Second law, if the net external force on an object is not zero, the object will accelerate in the direction of this net force. First law, if the net external force on an object is zero, the object will remain at rest or continue to move at a constant velocity in the same direction. Third law, for every action force, there is a simultaneous reaction force that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Amusement parks have a wide variety of rides, from ferris wheels, bumper cars, and carousels. Roller coasters, on the other hand, are arguably the main attraction. Forces that you feel on a roller coaster is never the same throughout, and this gives the rider a sense of unpredictability and is what makes it so exciting. Most roller coasters are pulled to the top of the ride using a chain lift. As the energy used to power the chain doesn't disappear, Cars store more energy the higher up they go. This is called potential energy and is released when the cars clear the top. Along with the force of gravity, this causes the car to accelerate as potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. Although friction from the tracks and air resistance eventually takes away all of the stored potential energy, this is why roller coaster cars don't need motors there is enough energy to complete the ride. The roller coaster cars and the people on board have mass. Gravity provides the acceleration and the tracks channel this force by controlling the coaster's direction. Newton's first law applies here, as the coaster will still have a forward velocity even when the track is moving upwards against the force of gravity. Roller coasters are massive structures. They take up a huge amount of space, destroying ecosystems and space and wild earth, and requires a large amount of electricity to operate. Most modern roller coasters are now built from metal, and the typical ride would require enough steel girders to make 10,000 cars. We never want something like this to happen again. And what we have done today is put in another level of additional safety measures. Scary and sad, a mother falling to her death while riding the Texas Giant. A young girl alone on a fast moving ride was sent catapulting through the air. This morning she's okay, but the question now is who's to blame? Whether from rider negligence or from design faults, half of all roller coaster deaths occur from medical conditions such as hemorrhages and cardiac problems. Less than a quarter of people were killed by the rides themselves. However, more employees are killed by roller coasters than riders from accidents and falls. A more effective surveillance system must be implemented to identify those with medical implications as well as posting cautionary notices, improving employee training regarding safety precautions, and engineering rides to better protect both riders and employees to help reduce these accidents. <laughs>